The Davenport Automatic Screw Machine. The cross-working tools continued. In the last chapter, we discussed tooling the front and rear tool posts, which are mounted on the front first position and rear second position cross slides respectively. In this chapter, we will continue tooling the Davenport automatic screw machine with a front tool arm fifth position and the rear tool arm third position. Remember, when tooling, jog the machine to half index. When the machine is on half index, the tools are back out as far as possible and it is easier to remove and reinstall the tools and or the tool holders. Half index. Half index can be determined when the top two work spindles are horizontal and parallel to each other, and when the slot on the burning spindle opening and closing cam is at three o'clock. The tool setting block. The tool setting block was used to center the tools in the front tool post and the rear tool post. It will be used again to center the tool in the rear tool arm. The tool setting block may only be used on the machine for which it was made. Never take a tool setting block from one machine and use it on another. The tool arms. Parts of the tool arms you should know are the circular tool adjusting worm, the tool adjusting plate, the jack bolt, the tool clamp bolt and washer, and the tool clamp. Tool in the rear tool arm. The rear tool arm operates in the third position. Tool removal. To remove the circular tool or any other tool from the rear tool arm, loosen the tool clamp bolt. Remove the tool clamp. Then remove the tool. Caution. All tooling is sharp and has to be handled with care or injury will result. Tool replacement and centering. First, clean the tool pocket. To put the tool back into the rear tool arm, note the pin inserted in the tool. Slide the pin in the tool into the hole in the tool adjusting plate that will bring the tool closest to center. Insert the tool clamp under the tool clamp bolt washer. Screw the tool clamp bolt so that the tool clamp presses against the jack bolt and the side of the tool. Snug up the tool clamp bolt against the tool clamp. The bolt should be just snug for final adjustment. Do not tighten. To center the tool, place the tool setting block upside down on the ledge of the rear tool arm. Set the tool to center by moving the tool down on the tool setting block. By turning the circular tool adjusting worm clockwise until the tool touches the tool setting block. The tool should just touch the block and be loose enough so that there is just a slight drag on the block when it is pulled out from under the tool. Now that the tool has been set to center, tighten the tool clamp bolt. Turn the circular tool adjusting worm clockwise again to take up the backlash. Run a workpiece. Diameter adjustment. 
If a diameter adjustment is necessary, use the turnbuckle associated with the third position front cam lever. To make the workpiece smaller, back off the tool post stop screw. Then turn the turnbuckle clockwise. Then reset the tool post stop screw. To make the workpiece larger, turn the turnbuckle counterclockwise. Then reset the tool post stop screw. Lateral adjustment. If the tool is not in alignment with the other tools, a lateral adjustment is necessary. Lateral adjustments on the tool arms are made with the two large nuts which are located on the center and end of the tool arm studs on which the tool arm is clamped. Note, movement of one slot is approximately ten thousandths when using lateral adjusting nuts. To move the tool away from the revolving head, loosen the outboard or thin nut. Then tighten the inboard or thick nut using a brass drive pin and a hammer. To move the tool toward the revolving head, loosen the inboard or thick nut, then tighten the outboard or thin nut using a brass drive pin and a hammer. Taper adjustment. There is no taper adjustment on a rear tool arm. The following are approximate figures. One flat on the tool post lateral adjusting screw equals 1 64th. One flat on the stop screw equals 10 thousandths. One flat on a turnbuckle nut equals 14 thousandths. One flat on a tool arm adjusting nut equals 10 thousandths. Tooling the front tool arm. The front tool arm operates in the fifth position. In most cases, the front tool arm will contain a cutoff tool, which severs the finished workpiece from the bar stock. Removing the cutoff tool holder. To remove the cutoff tool holder, loosen the tool clamp bolt. Remove the tool clamp. Then remove the cutoff tool holder. The blade can then be removed from this holder in order to be changed or resharpened. Removing the blade. Before removing the blade from the blade type cutoff holder, measure the distance that the blade extends from the holder. The recommended distance is generally 3 eighths of an inch. After the blade setting or distance has been determined, loosen the top screw on the side of the holder. Slide out the blade carefully. After the blade has been sharpened or replaced, Clean the tool holder and slide the blade back into the holder. Set the blade so that it extends from the holder at the predetermined measurement. Tighten the top screw on the side of the holder. After the screw is tightened, recheck the measurement of the blade setting. 
thoroughly clean the tool holder pocket in the tool arm. The holder can then be reinstalled in the machine and the blade sent to center as follows. Cutoff tool replacement. To put the tool back into the front tool arm, note the pin inserted in the tool holder. Slide the pin in the tool holder into the hole in the tool adjusting plate that will bring the tool closest to center for final adjustment. Insert the tool clamp under the tool clamp bolt washer. Screw the tool clamp bolt until the tool clamp presses against the jack bolt and the side of the tool. Snug up the tool clamp bolt against the tool clamp. Do not tighten for final adjustment. The tool is now ready to be set to center. Setting the cutoff tool to center. The cutoff tool in the front tool arm is not set to center in the same manner as are the tools in the rear tool arm, the front slide, and the rear slide. This tool is set visually to center and not with the tool setting block. After the cutoff tool has been loosely clamped to the front tool arm, jog the machine to the beginning of the working position. That is, just after the revolving head has been locked into position. The beginning of the working position will be approximately 6 o'clock on the slot on the bearing spindle opening and closing cam. Note the placement of the tool. Adjust the tool arm as close as possible to center by turning the tool adjusting worm counterclockwise to bring the tool up to center. Disengage the starting clutch and the feed lever throw out. Disengage the chuck opening lever throw out by pulling out the detent pin as learned when stocking the machine. Put the cam lever handle in the hole in the feed lever. Move the feed lever to the left manually. Then put the cam lever handle in the hole in the chuck opening lever. Engage the chuck opening latch. Open the chuck manually. Move the feed lever to the right. And manually feed out a small portion of the stock until it is past one half the width of the cutoff tool. Manually close the chuck. Switch the three-stage control box to the jog position. Jog the machine with the starting clutch disengaged and the cam lever handle in the hole in the fifth position tool cam lever. At the same time, push the cutoff tool gently into the stock by pushing the cam lever handle forward manually and slowly trim off the end of the stock. If, when the cutoff tool is pushed all the way forward, there is still a protrusion or burr on the end of the stock, raise the cutoff tool by turning the tool adjusting worm counterclockwise. Repeat this procedure until the end of the stock cuts off clean. Now tighten the tool with the tool clamp bolt. Take up the backlash by turning the tool adjusting worm counterclockwise again. It is good practice, after centering and clamping the tool tightly, to manually feed out another short length of stock and cut it off to recheck the tool for center. After the tool has been set to center and rechecked, re-engage the feed lever and the chuck opening lever in the chuck and feed cam.
At this point, run a workpiece. Lateral adjustment. If the tool is not in proper alignment with the other tools, make a lateral adjustment with the two large nuts on the center and end of the tool arm stud. To move the tool away from the revolving head, loosen the thin nut. Then tighten the thick nut using a brass dry pin and a hammer. To move the tool toward the revolving head, loosen the thick nut. Then tighten the thin nut using a brass drive pin and a hammer. Diameter adjustment. Under normal circumstances, if a cutoff tool is operating in the fifth position front tool arm, there will be no diameter adjustment. This is because the cutoff tool simply severs the finished workpiece from the bar stock and does not work to form or shape the workpiece. Taper adjustment. There is no taper adjustment for the front tool arm. 